Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today I get to show you guys an amazing Lego creation. This is the TIE Silencer, the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Silencer from the designer Mirko. You can find the instructions on his website, that's starbricks.net. And I know this is already complete, but I do wanna show you a bit of the build on camera. So I'm gonna magically turn into Ramon right now. And I'm sure he's explaining to you why he built the first half of it off camera. Anyways, here's a bit of the time-lapse build and then we'll get right into the review. So here it is, the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Silencer brought to you by the designer Mirko, also known as Star Bricks. And if you've been watching this channel for a while or that name sort of sounds familiar to you, it's because this is from the same guy that did the Ultimate Collector Series U-Wing about a year and a half ago. At least that's when we produced the video showing that one off. So before I jump into the high quality details of the TIE Silencer, I'd like to show you guys the book that Mirko produces. It's a very big booklet. It's nice and heavy and the quality is absolutely amazing. Mike who works in the studio also used to work at a printing press and just like the last time he's totally in awe and flabbergasted at the uh, high quality of the booklet. But here are the stickers that you're going to get for this particular model and you can see most of them have to do with the cockpit detailing and of course you're going to get that UCS collectible sticker. More on that later but here is the book now. It's got a table of contents, some excellent graphics, uh, and pictures that you can see from just about all angles. There's a bit of an introduction, a bit about the builder and the design that this TIE silencer is based on. That comes in both English and Italian. Remember Mirko uh, is Italian, so that's his native language. And then there's a lot of very high quality photographs. But really the thing I'm most interested in is this particular page, which has got a nice graphic and it also shows the dimensions of the ship, which by the way are 27 inches long or 74 centimeters, 13 and a half inches wide or 34 centimeters and six and a half inches tall or 16 centimeters. The instructions are built out in different sections. You can see kind of the little modular chunks. And then this is just the first page of what the instructions look like. And you can see the pieces that you're not using for each step are whited out, which was the same way the Ewing worked last time. And I personally like this approach for instructions. Also, I just wanna show you guys the last page. You can see this was all designed by Mirko, everything including this instruction manual. And at the bottom, he also included a special thanks list where you might be able to recognize, hopefully maybe at least one name. And all right, if you wanted to buy the instruction booklet, you can find it at starbricks.net. And you also have the option with a purchase just to become one of the first order pilots. Right, now let's jump into it. Let's check out the closer details of this mock. That's my favorite part about these videos, of course. And an upscaled model like this is really fun. Mirko absolutely brings it when it comes to detail. And first, I'd like to focus on the wings. They are a lot longer than that of the TIE Interceptor. And I know that's probably the closest TIE variant that matches up with the silencer. But in terms of proportions, this thing is much, much, much longer. And and it's a lot thinner and sleeker, even closer maybe to the TIE Striker. Upon closer inspection of the wings themselves, you can see they're mostly made up of Technic lift arm pieces, which makes sense because they are so long and slender, you can't have them bending or bowing right at the extremities. And this build technique is carried all the way to the ends. Those blasters get nice and thin, yet they still all point in the same direction and the build is quite precise this way. Now, speaking of the weapons though, it's really all about the heavy laser. This placement is similar to 
that of the interceptor and you can see it's been made with mostly uh, the inner wheel pieces that's also another little sticker and then this is a much better look at both the heavy laser and the build detailing that uh, goes along that middle panel for the wings you will notice at no point throughout this build is there a point where detail is spared and I'm also quite happy to say that the detailing you see here is based on accuracy and not so much just kind of arbitrary creative liberty if you take a closer look at the original model of this ship you'll see that he tried to recreate all of the proportions even when it comes down to the tiny little pieces all right now jumping onto the back of the build this is probably where I'd say some of the strongest uh, building techniques were used I just love the fact that the triangular kind of point that makes up the end of the ship is built with brick stacking you know with the slopes on either side they're connected with hinge pieces and the angle is quite subtle but it looks amazing and I really like how the light plays off the ship from this point that red effect that you see in the back by the thrusters is created with just a ton of one by two trans red pieces and those little fins that separate out those spaces are little flags we've got some nice cylindrical detailing that makes up the two little deflector shield projectors that goes right above that point and as we pan across the build from side to side I gotta say uh, the details on the arms that go all the way out even towards the very edges of the wings are fleshed out completely this really is a model that should be appreciated from every angle you could probably think of that's even the case when you see a bit of this ship from the lowest angle where it is connected to the stand and now let's flip this whole thing over towards the front here's a couple of different angles of the cockpit and like I said this is where most of that sticker detailing is put to good use in order to create that kind of black frame mesh that goes around the entire windscreen and then as we look from side to side here you can see just along the edge of the front of the arms there's even a bit of detail just kind of tucked away right on that flat line there's just so much to see here but anyways let's check out the interior this is actually one of the main functions of the model the front hatch technically opens but really uh, what gets you in and out of the cockpit is flipping down the entire front screen now that we have the whole thing opened up you can see the interior it's nice and big as you might imagine that's actually a seat for a Lego Technic figure which were guys that were discontinued quite a long time ago but you can see some detailing for the controls and also some more panel and diagnostic detailing on the back part so it goes without saying that Kylo Ren can fit into the seat with absolutely no problem and I love that the extra space from this larger model was put to good use when detailing the interior this is actually something that is kind of fun to open up and take a look at the inside as opposed to many of the minifig scale models just having enough space to fit a figure at all also I'm gonna open up this cockpit one more time and you can see that there are some control console details that are on the inside of the folding cockpit there to add just a little bit more detail and I do love the fact that the cockpit is on ratcheted joints you can see how it kind of snaps up into place and it's not loose now speaking of internal detailing we're looking at the top of the ship and there are some fun panel pieces that are worth taking a closer look at. I mean, this is just extra stuff that Mirko uh, added, I think, later down the line. It does kind of serve a functional purpose. I'll get to that in a little bit later. But you can see panel on one side opens up and a panel on the other side opens up. And it just reveals a bit more of the inner detailing. What I do like is that when I checked out the incredible cross sections uh, page for this TIE silencer, he did employ some gold bar pieces, which are actually represented uh, in the cross sections book, which is kind of a fun little Little nod but now is the time for the ultimate function of this ship you can remove the middle panel and included with instructions is also this lighting system you might have seen some of the shots from the beginning of the episode and this is definitely the main feature of the model that really separates this thing out against the crowd you get a nice ominous glow of red coming through the front of the cockpit and when you turn the whole ship around you get a very bright and striking red coming out from the back of the thrusters the red LED lights match up wonderfully with the trans pieces that are used in the back here and it even casts a bit of a red glow onto the ground behind the ship too which I think is a really fun effect the device that powers the LEDs takes three AAA batteries I can say that we left our rechargeables on overnight and we already drained them down once but when I came in that morning there was still a bit of a glow in the ship so I have a feeling the battery life lasts at least 12 hours that's just a total guess based on the rechargeable I used and Ramon who built this wanted to say that uh, this section in the instructions that outlines how the electronics goes together was super super helpful for him because he had never
never actually installed a lighting kit before. Now when you see those panels that fold up like you saw earlier, you can see one wire on either side that actually belongs to the lighting kit and isn't part of the Lego. Makes it a little bit easier to access and here is the whole set together. I didn't go through the sticker, the main UCS sticker that kind of details out this whole ship and it specs it like the rest of the UCS plaques always rests on a little stand. You've got Kylo Ren, BB-9E, and just the little information placard with the kind of monochrome digital render of the silencer in the back. Also, you saw me rotating the ship around on the stand before. I just wanted to show you guys in one solid shot, totally uncut, that you can move the ship in a full 360 degrees. It's actually a pretty smooth rotation, which if you remember from the Ewing, is pretty much the exact same construction. It's a super solid design. It's right at the center of mass. At the end of the day, what we've got here is just an incredibly high quality Lego mock. If Lego ever tried to produce a UCS tie silencer, I'd be hard pressed to see if they could actually do a better job than what we have here for Mirko's project design. I think the lighting system really puts it a step ahead. And outside of that, the details and proportions are immaculate. I can see why Mirko kind of fell in love with this design. It's really sleek. It's got a very intimidating and striking pose. And out of the latest trilogy, I'm so glad that he focused on this particular ship. Remember guys, you can find the instructions for sale at starbricks.net. Thanks a lot, Mirko, for sending over the booklet to us. And if you guys enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, just jumping in, wanted to let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome, awesome Lego mocks. The revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that help make these amazing Lego creations, and it's definitely worth checking out if you guys want to take a crack at building some of the more high-quality, detail-intensive Lego builds. That's www.brickvault.toys, and thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault.